the Honorable Chief Justice, Lady Justice Martha Kome and your Deputy Excellency Musalia Mudavadi, the Prime Cabinet Secretary, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as usual, I'm really pleased to see Chief Justice Emeritus Maraga and uh, Mutunga. And as I said last time, you keep giving us the best example of how you must support your successor. An example that is missing in different, in many parts, in other arms of government. And then keep, keep leading by, by that example. I really want to start by thanking you for all the work you're doing for Kenyans, Honorable Chief Justice, and more so in driving judiciary reforms. Our constitution provides that sovereign power belongs to the people of Kenya, and this power is to be exercised only in accordance with the constitution. Article 159 provides that judicial authority is derived from the people and shall be exercised by the judiciary through courts and the tribunals. This therefore means that judicial authority must be people-centered, hence your blueprint and theme for people-centered justice. Our judiciary has been very progressive, as I've mentioned in the past. It remains the only platform for citizens who seek to have their rights, liberty, or property safeguarded. You have been very deliberate and inclusive through the various court users committees that are bringing together members of the public, judicial officers, and various actors of the justice sector to deliberate on issues that affect the delivery of justice. The Nairobi County government is a member of various of these committees where our county attorney, and I'm sure she is here somewhere, represents us um, very well. Your work is providing confidence to investors, confidence to business people that there is predictability, there is the rule of law that supersedes the rule of man, and that people can be confident of what they put in. Thank you. That is driving a lot of investment to our country. And, and it's continuing to attract more investment just because of doing the right thing. When you go to other parts of the world and say, this is the only country where a presidential election has been reversed in Africa, many people don't believe it. But in as much as it was done, not for the show, but because of the issues that were brought, it really strengthens the standing of Kenya. Kenya is seen as a great beacon and a great frontier for investment um, globally because of the work you do. Um, you've, as, I, as I was saying, you've increased access to justice through your online platform, made it easier for those who seek justice to petition court and have their matters heard without having to travel far and wide. The creation of the small claims court, which we are proud of as Nairobi County, has given litigants an opportunity to access timely justice and least congestion at the commercial courts. Nairobi County, as you know, is working with you. We've donated land to the judiciary to support the construction of small claim courts in Mihango, Kasarani, Huruma, and Dagoreti. And the county will be formally reaching out to the judiciary to set aside a courtroom in the four areas where offenders charged for breach of various county laws can be arraigned at the courts nearest to them as required by the law. However, I have a little issue, and I think you know. For years, petty offenders in Nairobi have been served right here at the city court. Access to justice means convenience, means quick dispensing of small matters. You know, some even I can't describe. Someone has done that. <laughs> now, when we take these people to Bilimani, and then it takes another two days. And then it, I think, in as much as, yes, the authority belongs to the judiciary, partnering with us to devolve. Devolution is based on the principle of subsidiarity. A service is best offered at the lowest level, compatible with that benefit of the service. Very many Nairobians are being, you know, inconvenienced. Now having to go all the way to Milimani, they, they are used to us having them here, quickly dispensing with that, with that matter under the authority of the judiciary. I urge you to return the small claim, I mean, the, the, the city court under the direction of the judiciary. But let us sort that out. Because without that, the city slides into anarchy. These small offenses, and let me even remove the spectacles now. <laughs> These small offenses that need to be dispensed with, when the people realize that we're not able to, we will not be able to uphold rule of law in this city. And we shall slide into anarchy in the capital. I beg you that you can reconsider that. Let me say, I have long admired the Chief Justice's leadership. You take your constitutional and historical role seriously. You understand not just the formal constitutional role that this institution that you lead must play, 
but also its historic one, the protector and interpreter of the new constitution on which our national hope rests. It's a dual duty that you must be aware of, not just the formal legal requirements of the role, but also the call for visible substantive justice. It must be seen to be delivered, not just delivered. In my view, you and your branch of government have discharged both duties with distinction. Congratulations, Honorable Chief Justice.